welcome to Angels of Light Foundation, a voice for children and teenagers podcast. We are giving a platform to our younger voices, children and teenagers, sharing their thoughts on our mindfulness in nature programs and books, plus the educational system, asking them what type of school would they want to learn in? What would they like to see change in our world? Finding out what gifts they hold and why they feel they are here on this planet. We believe, as parents and educators, that we should strive to raise children with a voice and for them to be heard. Hey everyone, welcome to The Magic of Miracles, A Voice for Children. We're here joined again today for part two with Josie Palmer to discuss um, A Voice for Children, but this time on a slightly few different topics that we didn't quite finish off in the first um, episode. So welcome back, Josie Palmer. And obviously everyone knows um, Charles, my partner in crime. So um, thanks, <laughs> Josie, for joining us. And uh, um, giving your insights to a few more questions that we missed off on the first episode, but, uh, which I'm sure people will love. Okay, darling. Our first question was, um, over the observation of working you know, with children, going around schools, communities. Um, I've noticed, it's an observation that I've noticed. Maybe I'm completely wrong, I'll let you answer. But I've noticed that when I'm in schools or in centres or going to teach mindfulness or in large groups, that the boys are very quiet. The boys seem to be less confident than the girls. I'm not saying they're not confident. They just come across less confident. Um, they're more quieter, the girls seem more opinionated, more stronger with their views, even to the point of this podcast, whereas um, it was difficult for me to get a boy to come on and share his views. I can get loads of girls and young ladies and teenagers, uh, boys, it was it is a little bit of a struggle because they all turned us down, they didn't want to speak. So anyway, that was my first question to you, if you can answer that. Sure. Um, so there's definitely a lot of different factors that could affect that. I would say that in my experience, I haven't had that much experience in the classroom, but from what I've seen, I would say that it's not my natural habitat, as can relate a lot of my friends. Um, my, my friends also are very active people. They're not comfortable or at home in a classroom, most of the case. Um, I just feel like most guys I know are more comfortable outdoors, moving, being active, and in school is more of a requirement than a privilege for them. They take it maybe for granted, for granted, or maybe more as something they have to do rather than they get to do. Which is interesting because some people don't get the same access to education, but it's very taken for granted. Do you feel, I, I was quite surprised asking quite a few young men that were even your age from different parts of the world that I knew, they just wouldn't come on and talk. Well, also, it may be a similar case where they're not so comfortable sharing. I've, in my experience, I've seen that, that uh, girls are more sociable, generally speaking, than boys, because boys are very, they're inherently competitive. They're, it's programmed in their mind. They're trying to compete. They're always trying to be better. They're always trying to, you know, surpass their peers, which is normal, which can be healthy in, in a lot of situations. But if, say, a normal kid I found in a public school, if I had asked them to go on this podcast, they would probably say, no, because what if my friends find it and make fun of me? Honestly. And do you find that girls don't really care? Not in that case. No, I wouldn't say so. Because it's it's a completely different social programming, I would say, when you're being brought up as a girl or a boy. Uh, as a boy, my childhood, my upbringing has been very different from the norm. But I'd still feel that I'm a very sociable person compared to most boys. And I'd say I'm, I'm kind of the... Uh, exception. I feel that's why it's it's harder to find 
guys who would go on the podcast because they're not as sociable, they're not as comfortable in social uh, social environments, and more with their friends or where they're more, more relaxed. Podcasts probably aren't their cup of tea, for no better word. Oh, so the girls have, I mean, I've had girls on here of 9, 11, and they, there's no problem whatsoever. So we really okay. want to get that question, what would you feel, Charles? Well, no, just to elaborate on that, Joseph, um, can you maybe expand or uh, um, upon the competition, you know, how, how boys are maybe socialized or programmed to be a little bit more competitive and how that, you know, how that plays into being reluctant or a little, um, uh, I don't know, resistant to coming on a podcast or, or, or sharing their feelings or, or talking about their thoughts um, in a public setting? Well, I'd say, again, with my experience, it's very limited, but I'd say boys are generally less emotionally open and honest than, than girls, just generally speaking. It's completely generally speaking. I'm completely generalizing. But overall, I'd say that's the case with my experience. Um, I'm sure you've experienced some form of this where guys kind of conceal their opinions and emotions with the public and and with people that they don't know very well it's mostly the their close friends that they open up with in my experience and, and uh why do you think that is why do you think boys are socialized to be a little bit more closed off with their feelings um and, and also i do know what you're talking about <laughs> societal norms have played a big part in that uh it's been that way for centuries you know for as long as time has stood i mean I can think of, you know, men are sent to the battlefields in the Middle Ages. Mm. And they're meant to be tough and strong and, and defending their, their people. And, and in the Middle Ages, they're sent out, you know, seven, nine years old as knights. And, you know, they're, they're forced to grow up so fast that they, they don't really have the more personal, emotional stage that I feel like more girls had at that time. So I feel like that has kind of passed on to this this time in a way, but all, obviously I'm generalizing. But yeah, I think that you know, looking back and going back, and as I've gone along, I mean it's not all boys, but it is a large majority when I go into uh, surroundings, whether it's a center or a gathering or a community, or even recently they're sort of I was in a, a homeschooling schooling system, but it's a homeschooling school. I noticed the, there were some boys talking, but again, the girls were much more opinionated, much more stronger with their views, more likely to speak up. There was a few of the boys, but I'd say it's like 30% speak up, 70% don't. And I was just really noticing that because when I go to the younger children, so when I'm in the room with younger children, let's say they're six, seven, five, six, seven, it's a different scenario. They'll speak up. That's why if anyone's listening, if anyone knows the answer to that, I just know the older that I went, the quieter they got. I think that I know why that may be. For the younger ones, young children, anybody who's been around a young child knows that they're more blatantly honest than adults. They're blatantly honest. They don't care about what anybody thinks. They just say it. And they, because they don't fully understand the concept of social cues. That's why young children are very important to spend time with because they will give you their honest opinion. They will be completely straightforward. I know that from my case, I know that from a lot of other kids. I mean, unless they're lying about, you know, taking cookies from a cookie jar, they're gonna be really, really honest with you. So that's that's pretty important. So if you want truth or you want honesty, young yeah, children. They're really honest. I just see that the girls continue to be very open and forward with their words. And yeah quieter so it's just it's really really interesting I, I just noticed it the last even just prior to the pandemic you know teaching around here or wherever i was going that the girls much easily share and speak up and the boys just like mm, not me. so we speak up more <laughs> that's what i say speak up more please you know everyone wants to you hear your opinion because the girls are going to railroad at some point i think going forward so anyway that was our first question and then we have another question here what uh 
pressures or expectations, if you have any, do you feel are placed on boys in society in the world today? That's a really good question. That is a really I'll good question. I'll that question. I'm not taking credit. <laughs> well, I'd say pressure is really high these days. Really, really high. I haven't lived in other times, so I can't really compare it. But I'd say getting into a good school, getting good grades, growing up quick, maturing, being independent, um, being you know successful in whatever you do, you know these are all things that you're expected to do, and that can build up a lot. You know, school's not easy, especially during COVID. You know, we had to go online, and then you know, you no know, socializing, and then that kind of took away the fun part of school. Well, quote unquote fun. I'm sure some other children's you know, like school experience can be pretty tough, but for the most part, a lot of people, their most favorite part about school is the socialization, you, you know, it's they tell a, lot of socializing, a lot of friends, and then that was taken away. So all the pressure was just moved to you at home, isolated, doing work, not seeing anyone, also worried about this pandemic. At the beginning, we're like, we're all going to die. But, you know, it's also, you know, pressure, getting to schools is harder than it's ever been for college. Yeah. Getting into like a really good college is, is very hard. For instance, UCLA, uh, I was thinking going there, applying there uh, for college, the acceptance rate is very low. My grandmother told me it was 9%, but I, I'm not completely sure. I want to fact check that. I haven't fact checked yet. But Ivy Leagues, you know, Harvard, all those are virtually impossible to get into unless you are a valedictorian, you know, all the hopes of going to those schools out the window unless you're a stellar student. And you have to be like that. And you have to have discipline. You have to have a really good work rate. And that is very difficult. And it's expected of you if you want to go to those schools. Do you feel that talking to, you know, I know you've got lots of friends and they're in soccer and everything. Do they discuss that? Do they discuss the pressures and, you know, having yeah. to be someone or to, they're from their family or what do they, what do they say? So they're always talking about how depressing their workload is. It's nonstop. They are getting depressed. I know so many people that have minor depression, I'd say, not, not anything horribly serious, but very depressed and in a dark mental state because they have unbelievable workloads. They wake up, go to school, do soccer practice, do homework, eat, sleep, repeat. Five days, two days of rest, repeat. 36 weeks out of the year? Yeah, that's all it's and horrible. Is that pressure from them or society, or do you feel it's their parents? It's more society because schooling, traditional schooling, public schooling was invented either late 1800, around the Industrial Revolution by the Rockefellers and the JP Morgans and all these people, the big oil barons. Um, and they created it for their sole purpose to create workers and and for that they that's why they created the public school system and since then it's been modified it's it's evolved in a way but at the core of that is still to create workers in school it's not very creative it's more learning it's like a command it's like a computer they tell you commands you memorize them you repeat them back for tests for quizzes for essays, for everything. It's, it's very rinse and repeat. And I heard this from a very, very distinguished professor that I can't recall the name of. I think he was at this university in Michigan, uh, Hillsdale, oh no, not in Michigan, I believe, but it's Hillsdale College. And he told me, school information is outdated by 10 years. In college, 10 years. They just teach you how to work. They don't teach you extremely valuable up-to-date information because they want you to give you the work rate and the work ethic, but they don't have updated information. 
you th did he say that was the same as Harvard in them or not? That's in a completely eaten Harvard or then you're all in a different league, I think, correct? Well, it depends on what you study, I'd say. Because business, business doesn't, it's not always fluctuating like, say, neuroscience or, or you know, mm. electrical engineering is most likely 10 years back-ish, five, five to 10 years back. Um, I'm not super well versed on it, but it makes sense. So you talking to your friends, then they are very stressed out and worried and anxious because of the workload already. Every last one, including me. Every last one. So you're oh, Joseph. Wow. Well, thank you for like, thank you for just saying that, like for being honest and vulnerable about, um, you know, these pressures that you're talking about when you were talking about like the warriors um, going to battle and the pressures that men have to go and either fight a war um, and to survive. And then to talk about the pressures of, of creating workers, like the school environment to create workers since like the industrial revolution. And it's just shocking that you feel that, like you actually feel that pressure on you that like somehow they're trying to create you to get out there and push you out the door, like push you out and and go become I don't know like a worker bee. I'm surprised that you said that you 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 find the pressure as well because your family Joseph is very, is quite relaxed, yeah. Mm -hmm. And your mom, she seems you know a bit similar to me, quite relaxed, you know, easy going. And and you feel the pressure in in, in which way do you personally then? Personally, I have a very large workload, and also I have big dreams. I have you know expectations set upon me, which are valid but i have to complete them and they're not easy to complete i want to take over my dad's business i want to do well in that business i want to invest in private equity and uh, commercial real estate um, but for that i need capital i need i need a good income i need a good job and i need a stable situation and for that a lot of work a lot of perseverance and that just doesn't it's not like a switch that you turn on it's something you really have to fight for in that, you know, it's not easy. It's really not. And that's, I have big goals and I want to achieve them. And that's the pressure. So do you, do you feel you put the pressure on yourself then? In a way, yeah. But also, you know, I have family members who are uh, very successful at what they do. And, you know, I'm one of uh, two male cousins, well, two male successors to my entire family on my dad's side. And, you know, one's, one's doing very well, the other one's doing very well. And I'd like to do well too. And, you know, it's just one of two. Before there were four, now there's two. Um, I wanna do well. I wanna be successful and not just for them, for me. It, makes, it would make me feel very happy to, to be accomplished, but I don't wanna work until I'm 80, like my grandfather did. I wanna work, and then build up a passive income. Sorry, this is turning into like a full business. So click here for the, <laughs> for the, for the uh, what is it, the funnel. <laughs> um, but I'll wrap this up real quick. Yeah. I, I want to be successful, but I want to do it in holistically, organically. I don't want to just force it and have four hours of sleep for 10 years and then just retire. I don't want to do that. So, so um, if, there, if everyone's got this pressure, what would you, there has to be something that has to give and change. So what, if you had a solution for that, or you could say, okay, this is what I think, what would you say to people? What would you say to the educational system or, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Well, yeah. So I'd say a little bit of pressure can be very healthy, but a lot of it can be very dangerous. A little bit of pressure is enough to have somebody motivated to accomplish a certain goal. But too much pressure can unmotivate someone. It can make them so overwhelmed they want to quit, which I have experienced some other people, well, I've met other people who, who have felt that. And it's very unhealthy. You know, workloads, I don't believe in, in a lot of homework because what's the point of going to school for eight, eight hours a day? Going home, homework. You're over full to the point you shut off. It's not really going in. I agree. So you're, you're saying do the work in the schools and then make 
small bit of homework at the end of the week to see if they've taken in, you know, what they've been listening to this week. Do you, is that what you feel? Absolutely. Maybe a little bit of homework, but not four hours a night. I know people who have four, five, six hours a day of homework on top of everything. Yeah, it seems to be. Is, we, growing up, I didn't have a lot of homework. Maybe that's changed. I mean, it seems you know, to change a lot. Yeah. 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 yeah, you know, it is what it is, isn't my favorite saying, but in this case, there's not an entirely large amount of things I can do to, you know, come in school boards because they're school boards. Yeah. This can help if somebody sees it. I agree. Word. Maybe this could do something that would be amazing. You're yeah. right. Same message wherever I've gone around the world in schools and done hundreds of children. And I speak to them and it's the homework that just stresses them out. They close down and it's not just here, it's, it's everywhere. I mean, we spoke to the two girls in Lebanon, the girl said the homework, and she's 11. Like, it's just too much, you know, and even here. So it doesn't matter who I speak to, they, you know, they're more happier, the children with less homework, with a little bit of homework. They seem to thrive and want to go in. Whereas if there's more, if, so if anyone's listening, there needs to be an adjustment. Powerful message. The new the new generation, um, you and your peers, Joseph. Um, you mentioned that that just the classroom work is just not creative, and I think part of the key to changing this planet, changing this world, is to allow you, your peers, to be creative and shine that light and let that be kind of fostered and built. Yeah. And these pressures are getting in the way of that a little bit, and it's kind of searching for balance. You're right. That's where the creativity comes from. And that's when you, you there's a birth to something unique when somebody's in that flow of if you're over pressured and over cooked, that can't drop in that magical creation. Do you know what I mean? It it, it, it comes normally in a relaxed, more hmm. your relaxed, chilled out state. That you know, it comes in organically like you just said Josie you know when they're creating something it's good to look back at the people that created electricity or the crazy these or the crazy that is to see actually how did they find that where they just they're pondering away in their workshop I think so most of the time and in mm -hmm. that that uniqueness that creativity but if you're overloaded again lack of creativity can't think for themselves and then they're in a system that they can't they get in a loop and it's difficult to get out um, I do think that the pandemic did for a lot of pe entrepreneurial people online. Um, I see that a lot of young people are working online around the world, traveling. I, I see some positives with that. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've had friends who've done well in the stock market, surprisingly, uh, during this online era, which is shocking because kids my age making uh, yeah. a lot of money on the stock market. But obviously it's forced people into social media into you know youtube and all these sites and and that can be pretty detrimental and if you get addicted to it it's very hard to stop and it's it's like a drug so it's that is a big negative to to the whole social distance type 2020 apocalyptic life that it was forcing people to go online and spend more time with technology and now I know people who cannot spend 20 minutes without yeah. looking at their phone, without, you know, checking something. A lot of people don't even want to meet people anymore because of that. They, they work online and they stay there and they keep with their few friends and they don't meet with people. They don't want to mix with people. It, it, it's very interesting, you know, the way we all came out the other end um, out of the dishwasher, <laughs> completely different, you know, but in, a, in, a, in another sense, I think a lot of awakening, um, as we were just discussing earlier, that you know we, we wanted to just have a quick uh, point on the um, the sound of freedom, um, which I know Joseph, your parents have seen. You haven't. The child saw it today. I saw it the other week, and and that was that is something that we feel that everyone don't you think Charles should go see it? It's very important. It's bringing light into the awakening of the world. It's shining a light on a lot of things. But I think it's a really important film to uh, see, um, educational-wise, um, what's really going on, 
that everything's coming and being exposed. So I suppose that's one side of media that they can use to expose the the the, the things, the darker side of things that are coming out, um, and then and 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 help these children help uh, rescues around the world. Wouldn't you say, Charles? Yeah, it's it's this movie has to be shared. You know, well, that's what the, the, yeah, it has to be shared. The media is one way to get the movie out there, but it's all word of mouth. We have to talk about it, but the media is also trying to suppress it and hide the, hide the movie too from the truth coming out. So um, we, have to, we have to have these conversations, you know, despite the resistance, despite them trying to bury, uh, to bury it. Well, it's the same, you know, the sound of freedom is like us coming up with the voice, of ch the voice for children, you know, it's a yes. thing. Let, let them be heard, let them mm. know what's going on, you know, share it, speak up, see it, you know, go support the movie, go tell people about it, more awareness, and to look after each other as a community. And, and, and you know, looking after, I remember growing up um, in the street, everyone used to look out for someone's child, we used to all just play in the street, you know, and that seems to have disappeared. Um, for whatever reason, you know, I I don't know, but it, it's awareness of again helping one another, looking after the children, listening to the children, caring for the children, nurturing for the children, and so it becomes a different way of going forward on this planet. Do you know? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? You know, there has to be if someone's listening, you know, listening to what you've been saying about the education system, the homework that children. In my day, we never used the word stress. We never used the word um stressed depressed never used anything like that we just didn't did we like school particularly i was probably one that didn't um you know i don't like to conform in any way um but looking back i probably went to a good school <laughs> compared to you know relatively what i see today so um yeah so we just wanted to share the um the sound of freedom because if anyone's listening please do uh, see the film I know it's only showcasing in America at the minute. It's it's at the moment it needs to be seen worldwide. So someone needs to pick it up to be able to show it. You know, on on I think it should be on every platform personally. Um, but yeah, did you have any other anything you would like to share with us, Joseph, that you feel is important uh, before we uh, before we leave? Anything at all that you feel that we've missed? Um, I have something very cliche, but very important to say. When I played golf today, I saw someone who wasn't very happy, who worked at this restaurant at the golf course. And instead of being annoyed with someone because they're spreading their annoyance possibly to you, I would say spread positivity as much as you can because it really makes a difference in someone's day. If you're not having a good day or, or something came up that, that is frustrating you or, or money up the waters, I'd say just, just spread as much positivity as you can, even if someone isn't being nice to you, because maybe they're just going through something or it's probably not you, even if it is. Just, just be happy and, and, and spread a lot of positivity because that's what we need in this world. It's, it's our world is lacking in that supply. So I'd say positivity and support. Did you say anything to that person at all? Or I just, I was just as kind as possible to them. Do you think they know? Um, our our server just our, was having like an off day, and I and I just tried to be as nice as possible to her and and. And asked her how, how she was doing, and and sorry, what? What did she say back to you? Oh, she was she's just like I'm I'm fine. Thank you for asking. You know, I just just care about people. That's also being mindful about not yourself, but also uh, yourself, but also other people. So because you were aware and, and witnessed that, you were aware to see that, some people wouldn't notice that. And if they're a bit off with them, they're like, why are they rude to me? What have I done? I haven't done anything wrong. So they'll go on their story instead of being observant that this person, like you said, everyone's got something going on in their life. And to just ask them, it's interesting when we even go into a supermarket or a store, 
my husband will look at the name badge of the person and say, hi, Paul, how are you doing today? And they'll say, you'll see they'll stop. And they'll say, oh, uh, really good, thank you. You're the first person to ask me, you know, in a long time. Uh, because everyone's in a rush to bag and get out or probably doesn't even see the person or probably they're on the phone and get, you know, the groceries checking out. So you're right, is to be more aware of people around you, uh, be more kinder. Um, be if I may, if I may add on to that, yeah. be the difference in someone's day. Exactly. At the end of the day, think about what you've done. What have you, what impact have you had that day? I think, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the impact that you have on people can be very, very significant, even if they're, you know, even if it doesn't seem like it. And one interaction can change someone's day. And one of negativity can end someone's life. Yeah, if they mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So we, it, it's, it's not saying that, you know, that it's just to be aware you're right, to be aware of people, to be aware when someone's sad or having a bad day, not to go off at them and just check. Ian, you know, how are you today? How are you doing? Yeah, it, 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 that you're correct in saying that 100%. It's just to really see the person. Right. Thank it. you for that, Joseph. I, I received that, by the way. You, yeah. I mean, you just with your words, you're making a difference, you're changing the world, and you're shining that light. And it made me think of, of um, I think there's a phrase that it, it takes a lot more darkness to um to make a room dark but it only takes one small tiny light to light up the room and that's what we do every time we smile at someone um ask how their day is but terry like you're you're so right it takes awareness i don't think people are some people aren't aren't um trying to ignore people they just don't see it they yeah. just don't see it because you know, they're going on to the next thing and what a what a blessing and a gift that you have, Joseph, to just to just notice. Awareness of that, yeah. And, mm -hmm. and hoping that people listening to this will get something out of it to check in with the person at the supermarket or the coffee shop or in, in the store. Just be how are you? How are you doing? How are you feeling? You know, just really connect with that person and and just so they know that they're there, they're not just an assistant that people aren't really interested in. I think, yeah, in any way, it's good to check in and ask how people are doing. Yeah, it, yeah, that's a lovely way, I think, to end it. So, if I could add one last thing, um, thank you very much for listening. Again, you could you could do anything with this time. Right. And you could you could do something that's that's very, let's say, less impactful than listening to this. This really helps let's say educate and not even educate more help people become aware helps them become more aware of of children and not i'm not just talking about myself i'm talking about you know other children's experiences and, and it's really important to hear children's experiences and their in their opinions and there's not a lot of of kids who would you know gladly come up and speak about the time. I don't know very many who would. And I'm so happy I did this because I really, really, really hope this is making a change because I really see a great positivity in this. Thank you. No, and thank you so much. And thanks that Josie. That's why we always ask people to please share it as much as possible with as many people um, and to really listen to our children um on the planet so really they do have a voice they do have a lot of wisdom and um they come with a lot a lot of wisdom that we i think we're missing you know so it is important for us to hear them and um, see them for the individual little souls that they are and allow them to bring their light for this planet what they're here to do and be so thank you everyone for joining myself, Joseph and Charles. We really appreciate everyone listening. We appreciate your comments. Uh, if anyone would like to come on to A Voice for Children on the Magical Miracles podcast, please get in contact with us. 
at angels angels of life online.com but all the information will be below anyway and uh, yeah thanks a lot for everybody who joins us take care lots of love